Hi everybody, this is Flo from KMS Reviews, and my guest today is the singer-songwriter Catherine Nagy, born and raised in Ireland, lived in Puerto Rico and Spain, now living in Indianapolis. So hi there, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Hi, hi Flo. Thanks so much for having me on today. Can you start by giving us a quick overview of your journey halfway around the globe and how you became a musician? Yeah. Um... Well, so I was raised in Ireland, as you mentioned, and um, moved around a lot as part of my, with my family, you know, part of my father's job. Uh, we moved to America and we lived in Puerto Rico. Um, and so I have been playing music my whole life as a child, being in choirs and uh, musical theater. Uh, I played piano and flute. Um, and so music was a big part of my journey and my parents, although they're not musicians, uh, they loved listening to music. So I have lots of memories uh, listening to Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, um, Chris Christopherson, um, and a lot of Irish Celtic music as well. Mary Black, uh, one of the favorites in my family. So um, I think, I, I guess I just absorbed a lot of music as a child. Um, I never intended on doing music professionally. And, uh, I went to college and studied business, studied accounting, uh, and went and worked for a consulting firm for a long time. Um, but during, during that period is when I got my guitar and I really started writing music uh, during that time. And then in 2017, um, I just decided to go for it full time. Uh, It, I had three children by then with my husband and um, I was no longer working in the consulting field and uh, music was just uh, something that I always felt this calling to do. I always wanted to write. Um, I loved watching other people perform live music and kind of wanted to try it myself. And so that's really uh, what, what brought me full circle um, to doing music. And when I started to write, Uh, I noticed that I started incorporating a lot of those mu the music that I had absorbed in my childhood. A lot of the folk singers, a lot of the Celtic uh, influence um, kind of came out when I started writing. And so that's, that's kind of how I ended up where I am right now. With all the uh, instruments you learned to play, did you ever take classes for these? I did, yes. I, took, I was a piano student. Um, into my teenage years, uh, and I played band. I played flute in my band um, again it, through my high school years, um, and then I continued to st study vocal music. I also was uh, studied voice um, into college as well. So I I did uh, take a lot of lessons along the way. You you just told me that there was this point where you decided to go full time with music. Was there a, a certain special moment where you just stood there and thought, okay, that's it. I'm going to be a musician, musician or was it a process to just where you, uh, get where you are right now? You know, it was, I kept having, um, I kept having moments in my life where I would want to do it. Um, I'd want to go um, become a better guitar player and start writing. Um, and I would write in private, but I never shared the music. Um, and I just kept being, kind of haunted by this thought of being a musician. And then I would be too afraid to do anything with it. So I would just, you know, go back to normal. Um, but then the summer of 2016, uh, my mom and I went to see a lot of concerts that summer. We went to see uh, Bob Dylan. We went to see David Gray. Uh, we went to see, um, oh, there's one other artist. I'm forgetting his name, um, Ray, La Ray LaMontage. He, um, We went to see the Dixie Chicks. And so it was a big summer of live music for me. And I remember sitting there um, thinking, I want to do what they do. Like, I really want to do what they're doing. And I kind of just said, well, why am I not doing what they're doing? Um, and so immediately I started writing all the time. Um, I went back and started taking guitar lessons because I was not a very skilled guitarist. I still am not a very skilled guitarist. I use it more to write music. Um, but 
And then through through that process, my guitar player is actually uh, my my own uh, sorry my guitar teacher uh, actually became my lead guitar player, um, and he produces much many of my songs now. So it was a blessing that we met that way as well. So he's still the guitar player of the band you're in. He is, and he produces uh, m most of my music as well. Okay. So uh, when I uh, went over the content of your uh, web page, I read a quote yeah. from a guy named Jim Reiser, and he said, her lyrics make one think and celebrate life like the free spirit Catherine is. So uh, going over your content uh, music wise, I always found this honest core inside your music. You're just very emotional, very heartfelt, aiming for emotion, so to speak, both positive, positive and negative ones. So that being said, uh, how would you describe your songwriting process? Oh, well, thank you for that. Jim, um, Jim's a good buddy of mine. He's been a great mentor for me since day one, since I started uh, back into my music. Uh, songwriting for me uh, was, was never anything I learned. It's all something that just came from me. Um, I've, only now have I really started to think about a little bit more um, how people write songs, but most of my songs uh, are just me sitting at a guitar, sitting with my guitar or at a piano, uh, expressing some sort of feeling or emotion that I am sincerely feeling in that moment. There, um, I don't write to uh, plots or to anything. I really just write from my heart and from my own human experiences. Um, and so I think I've, as the more I've written, the more I've learned little ways to craft words better or craft arrangements better. Um, I'm working with very, very talented people now um, in my band and other songwriters. And so I'm always learning from them, um, you know, ways to improve my songwriting. But for me, it's just, it's very personal and it's just, um, just kind of comes from inside. Uh, I feel moved. Uh, it's very kind of a spiritual thing. Sometimes I just close my eyes and a song just comes out. Um, mm. And then it just feels wonderful when it's out of when it's out of me. Yeah, it is. It absolutely shows that you're that it comes from from the heart and not being read off a paper or something like this. So uh, Thank you. being a wife and mother of three, is the family a major influence in the songs you create as well? Yes, they, it's hard not to. Um, being, being a mother is a huge part of who I am as a woman and as a person. Um, so yes, many of my songs touch on my role as a mother um, and are, some of them are about my children. Um, many of them touch on my husband and just the role of being a wife and um, the ups and downs of, of all that, you know, and yeah. Um, and then many touch on former, you know, <laughs> former relationships as well. And just things that as a human, I'm still processing and have gone through um, is kind of, but motherhood is definitely uh, one of my new songs I'm working on right now is, is a lullaby for my son. And so um, it's definitely a huge part of my songwriting process. All right. So um, with all the songs you've created so far and with uh, 2021 in full speed now, uh, hopefully with the pandemic being off the table uh, anytime soon now, uh, what are the actual projects for 2021 for you? Speaking as a oh, single artist. Oh, I'm so artist. excited. Yeah, I'm so excited to be able to get back into um, the studio with my band. Um, now, I must say this past year, has really stretched me in the sense of um, I now have learned how to record remotely. You know, I've, I've been doing all my vocals from my home here, from this room. Um, I've been working with my band, um, and sh we've been rem we've been recording remotely, and we've been creating songs that way, and that was a first for us. So it's nice to have that uh, skill set now to be able to do that as we need. Um, but I'm so excited to just be able to collaborate with them in the studio. We're going into the studio uh, under a month, like three weeks from now. And I have a group of eight songs that 
I'm so excited to record live. I'm not sure if we'll get to all eight of them, but that's kind of where we're starting. Um, and they, these are songs that are, again, very personal. One's about my son, uh, one's about my grandmother um, and memories of her in Ireland. Um, one's about my husband. Um, and so it's just, I'm really excited to be, be able to, um, these, are, these are songs that I wanted to do live in studio together because they mean so much to me. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that emotion was captured, which yeah, I think like it's a... really nicely captured when you're all playing live together. Yeah, like you said, uh, I guess being in the studio with each other gives a whole a new lot of chemistry uh, to the scene. So, so you can record it at home, but I think it's better and more alive uh, with the guys being on set and recording it there. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm so excited only, for that. Yeah. So, so you're not only a single artist, but working with others as well, uh, not only in the band, but I found out about your project Gypsy Lady Music recently. Can you give us some details about this project? Yes, this is a new kind of project. So it's early, um, but this past year during um, the pandemic, I s took um, a course out of Los Angeles to learn more about um, music licensing and getting songs in TV shows and movies and ads. And that's always something I've been interested in pursuing. So um, through learning about that, I expanded my network of musicians and producers. Um, and that was one of the, the beautiful things about last year was using Zoom and being able to talk to people and meet people virtually like you. You know, this is how we connected as right. well um, through yeah. our mutual friend, Jackie Lure, who, who was on one of your interviewees. Um, and so I have just, I'm starting to work with artists, um, mostly representing myself right now and a few uh, close artists that I know, um, just as I learned the ropes and continue to make, you know, expand my network um in that sync licensing but my hopes is over the next few years as i get to you know get to know people and make get a little bit more traction and get some of my songs placed uh is that i can eventually work with other artists to get their songs placed as well and and that's kind of the hope for 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 gypsy lady music it's a boutique licensing firm is it just a myth or is it true that uh, the networking aspect of the thing with sync is everything. So if you don't know anybody, you won't get for very far. I think it's very true. I think that's, um, I think that's human nature. And, uh, you know, you work with people, you know, you work with people that you trust. Um, and there's a lot of details um, and legal details that come along with licensing songs. And so um, I think there's an element of trust there to make sure that, you know, you are authentically representing artists that you own the copyrights and that you're all that stuff. And so I think um, as you as you know, it takes years to develop relationships with people. And um, and I'm I'm willing to put that time in to develop, you know, relationships. I love getting to know people and I'm a trustworthy person. So I um, I I'm ex excited to get to know people better and represent other artists. Mm -hmm. um, That's been a nice thing about, you know, this past year, too, is I've been able to attend conferences out of Los Angeles um, that were held virtually, uh, whereas if they had been, you know, in in Los Angeles pre pandemic, I might not have been able to attend those because I'm here in Indianapolis and not in L.A. a lot. So I was able to meet a lot more people and tap into a lot more communities um, this past year because of the virtual element, which is was really nice. Yeah, that's, that's this is a positive aspect. You could say if you want to find something positive out of the pandemic, that people were forced to meet online more. And uh, this also was the the birthday of yes. the <laughs> quick shot interview. So <laughs> Um, that's one of the things I learned as well. So uh, yeah, oh, exactly. before yeah, that, exactly. I, I wasn't I wasn't really attending any online meetings, but now it's daily life, so to speak. Uh, back to the Gypsy Lady Music Project. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this was the starting point of Mocha Muse. Is that correct? 
Yes. So Mocha Muse is a new um, a new sync uh, sync licensing type of songwriting project I'm working on. Uh, Mohini Sule is a songwriter out of London, and she and I connected, um, you know, a year and a half ago, and we've been writing songs together ever since. And we have decided to kind of launch a duo um, called Mocha Muse. Um, the M-O is for Mohini and the K-A is for Catherine, so Mocha Muse. And um, we're just writing very poppy, upbeat, happy songs um, that are usually used a lot in advertising and sync, um, touching a lot on female empowerment themes as well. Um, and we're just very excited. We have our first song uh, being released this Friday. Um, and they'll be on Spotify and all the streaming uh, May, May 21st, so this upcoming Friday. And it's called Phenomenal, and it's about, uh, it's, it's about women and how awesome women are. <laughs> <laughs> so is this one of many songs you, you have in store, or is this one song you try to get out there and see how, how the reaction is? We have a handful of songs that are ready to go that we've been pitching um, for different projects. And so we're, we're going to start getting into a pattern of releasing uh, these songs um, every six to eight weeks, uh, depending on. And then we're continuously writing new songs as well. Uh, so with all the projects you're already in, uh, are you available for collaborations or do you think uh, at this time my schedule is stacked and I don't need any more uh, people working with me or is it a constant process of well let's see how this works you know I do I do collaborations but I have to be very careful with my time uh, so I have some I have some writing um, some writing schedules dated out for months um, so I have one in June with another writer I've, and one in July already scheduled with another writer. So I have to kind of be um, very controlled with that, with that, or else it could get out of hand yeah. between all of my own artist projects and then the sync writing projects. But uh, my passion is writing songs. So I will write songs with whoever wants to write songs um, as much as my schedule allows. I just love writing songs very much. Speaking of the, the stacked schedule, uh, you're not only a musician, but also a talk show host, as I found out. So uh, you have a talk show called the Sprinkle Your Magic talk show. Can you tell us about that project as well? Yeah, this is also a new project. See, this past year um, has allowed us to try to dabble in different things and explore different, um, different out, you know, ways and paths. Sprinkle Your Magic was just an idea that came to me uh, because I have been meeting so many wonderful people this past year and I already knew uh, wonderful people in my life um, and I just I'm a very positive and happy person um, generally I'm an optimistic type of person obviously I'm sad at times too but I, I tend to focus on the positive, and so I want to find a way to share people's stories, to share the positive, um, uplifting things that people have been doing this past year. Um, and Sprinkle Your Magic was kind of that idea uh, to come up with a, a topic, discuss it with you know six or seven guests, and then um, release it. And so I'm in the middle of my season two, Uh, right now, and we're discussing hope. Uh, and so I invite uh, musicians, I invite entrepreneurs, uh, local business owners here, um, other business owners that I've met throughout, you know, the, around the world as well. Um, and we just spend, you know, a short brief time talking about hope, talking about uh, what allows them to kind of find hope in their lives and um, hear what their stories are and what they're working on right now that's um, bringing them light. And so I do it on Instagram Live. Um, I, at some point, I, I have hopes to try to get it onto some sort of a podcast, but I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. I'm baby steps. Yeah, right. So 
um, I guess there's there's magic uh, found to be sprinkled everywhere, literally. So it doesn't have to be confined to uh, business owners or musicians or anything, but to every other person you met, uh, you meet. Yes, people. The, yes, everyone has magic to share, and that's what it's about: sprinkling each person's magic. So the last question for tonight would be. If I gave you a mic and I told you there's the stage, go up there, there's 500 people uh, waiting for a positive message from you, what would you uh, say to them? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, um, I reserve the toughest for the last. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. Okay, we make it a, a bit, a bit um... easier for you and we say the those are 500 struggling musicians right now. So that, that should be a bit easier to talk something uplifting <laughs> to them. <laughs> well, I, I think, um, I think it's never too late is my, is my message. I think sometimes the music industry or life in general, people can have preconceived notions on um, you know, you're, it's too late to start something or you, you missed it. Uh, you should have started your music when you were in your 20s. Um, and I, I don't think that's true. I think that music is a connector and people don't, ma people don't care what your age is. Uh, people care about the songs and people care about how the lyrics and how the music make them feel and how it can relate to their life. And so, um, I always tell people that, and that was me with my, my life. You know, I took 10 years break from music and so could have easily fallen into that trap of it's too late. I missed it. It's too late. And um, now I know I can live the rest of my life knowing that I did what I really wanted to do. And I, I tried and I don't know where, I don't know where my music is going to take me, but, and I don't really care where it takes me. I just know I'm having so much fun and I've met so many wonderful people. Um, and so I'm so glad that I just took that leap of faith to follow my heart and, and do my music and not think it was too late. Yeah, that's what it's about. In the end, you got to go for it, no matter what. Right. Exactly. So, Catherine, thank you very much for meeting me today. Guys, if you want to know more about uh, Catherine Negi and her uh, projects, please make sure to check out the links in the description of the video or in the description of the podcast. Um, that's it for this show. All I have to say is be safe, guys, and we'll see each other next time. Bye.